Our next speaker is is uh, Faye Lyons. Faye here. Uh, Albert Cole. And after Albert Cole is William McDonald and Luke Saragusa. Saragusa. Welcome. You have five minutes. Hey, thank you. My name is Albert Cole. I'm an environmental lawyer with a long time uh, professional and personal interest in efficient transportation. I have four brief parts to my presentation my position on the proposals before you, why it's easier to get a tar sands project in Canada than a bike lane in Toronto, <laughs> what, what Don Cherry has to do with this matter, and the squandered potential. So first, the proposals. I support the proposal for separated bike lanes, properly designed, of course. It's a modest start, but a step forward. By all means, study the additional options, but then implement them, don't bury them. On the question of the environmental assessment for a Bloor-Danforth bikeway, in my opinion, you don't need an environmental assessment. Indeed, you'd look a bit silly assessing the negative environmental impacts of more cycling. The public ought to be fully consulted, true, but that shouldn't cost $500,000. Cycling is a big success in Toronto. Just go outside and take a look at the many Torontonians that are cycling. Uh, cycling hasn't become a success because of City Hall. It's a success despite City Hall, Toronto has one million cyclists, at least recreational ones. By making streets safer, we can get more people cycling regularly instead of congesting our roads with cars. So the tar sands. The sad truth is that it appears to be faster in Canada to get a tar sands project than it is to get a bike lane in Toronto. There's an easy explanation. Tar sands projects may devastate the landscape, foul the air and water, and create monstrous tailing spawns. But there's one thing a tar sands project doesn't do. Eliminate a single parking spot. <laughs> if there's one thing we do awfully well in Toronto, it's to wildly exaggerate the value of on-street parking. The Clean Air Partnership did two studies, one for the annex, where it found that people arriving by car contributed, you can guess, 30%, 20%, 10% of uh, business for local merchants, 10%. The majority of business and spending came from pedestrians and cyclists. And the report found that there was lots of off-street uh, municipal lots that were underused. In 2008, this committee ordered a feasibility study of a bikeway for Bloor Danforth. The study found that uh, a bikeway, mostly with bike lanes, could be implemented with only marginal impact on motor traffic and car parking. The report was buried, never publicly released. 20 years earlier, another report found that Bloor Danforth was an ideal cycling route. So my question is, how many tar sands projects have been approved in those 20 years? So Don Cherry. Hockey Night in Canada's Don Cherry considers himself a real champion of the uh, average hockey player, the regular hockey player, particularly one who is willing to play a rough brand of hockey and to fight. But medical science is starting to show that so-called enforcers in hockey suffer brain injuries that ultimately diminish not only the quality of their lives, but often the length. So what does that have to do with us today? Well, many people on council consider themselves champions of the average guy. This is apparently the fellow who drives a car to get around the city. But here's my rhetorical question. Who is the main victim of a car-focused transportation system? It's not the cyclist, for despite the perils of the road, cycler, cyclists are the happiest of commuters and uh, people who save a lot of money on transportation. In fact, uh, and stay fit and trim at the same time. The kinds of things the car ads promote, but never deliver. And it's not the pedestrian for similar reasons. The main victim of the car is the motorist. It's the drivers and occupants of cars, including children, who suffer the highest death and injury toll in Canada each year. And if you hit a cyclist, you kill a cyclist or pedestrian, the motorist is haunted for the rest of his or her life. It's people in cars who suffer from low levels of physical activity and fitness and end up with long-term health problems like heart disease. And it's people with cars that suffer the highest financial burden, not because of licensing fees and so on. Actually, a recent report showed that, in fact, uh, motorists underpay for local roads, whereas cyclists and pedestrians overpay. As a homeowner who pays property taxes, I understand the math. 
So the bigger burden on motorists is that it costs up to $10,000 per year on average to operate a motor vehicle. So $10,000 uh, to be stalled in traffic while I and my bike that costs a few hundred dollars a year a zip by. So let me end with the potential. The bicycle along with better transit and better planning offers, offers solutions. How many more people might cycle with the right infrastructure? A 1998 poll, 98 poll found that 70% of Canadians would cycle to work given a distance of under 30 minutes in a bike lane. How many trips does that mean? Well, the average Canadian makes about 2,000 trips each year that are under three kilometers, easy cycling distances. So finally, how, what can you do? Number one, don't make it your goal to keep cyclists off main roads unless you have some hidden anti-business agenda aimed at depriving merchants of this source of revenue. Two, read the t-shirts. Cyclists are traffic. They Thank don't you impede much. traffic. Thank you. I have to, I, I mean, you're very entertaining, but I have to treat everybody fairly. And we have a long day. I have a question. Yeah, Councillor Kirks. What was that final point? Also a member of uh, the Annex Residents Association, and, and uh, the Bloor Visioning Study, uh, which originally called for wider sidewalks and, and no bike lanes, uh, was reversed. Uh, what is the position of the Annex Residents Association on bike lanes on Bloor Street now? The uh, Annex Residents Association recently passed a. Uh, I've got. Some The, the, the stretch of Bloor Street in question is, in fact, the narrowest stretch of Bloor Street and the hardest place to put them, but it was the study that showed uh, the economic impact that swayed not just the Annex Re Resident Association. The BAA has also come on side now and supports cycling through the Bloor Street and elimination of on-street parking. fighting to keep parking spaces when in fact it contributes a very small amount of business and municipal lots that are close by are actually available and could accommodate uh, uh, those people arriving by car. Thank you. Okay, thank you.